Herbivores need to be constantly on the move in order to eat, and at least twice a year they migrate, longer or shorter distances, in search of places with more grass. Moreover, the grasses of tropical regions are less nutritious than those of the northern hemisphere. Therefore, all the herbivores of the world, ruminants or not, have in common certain physical characteristics which enable them to travel great distances using the minimum energy in order to find fresh pasture wherever it is. This, therefore, is the origin of all these swift animals of the savannah, not the pressure of predators as was at first thought. This grass revolution was also vital in the development of human beings. That moment between two and four million years ago came just when the human genealogical line had reached a crucial point, the birth of the Homo genus from the Australopithecus here in Eastern Africa. Whatever their name, the proto-humans of the time were rather small, stood erect and had very good eyesight. They weren't capable of hunting down the large running herbivores, nor could they compete against the formidable predators. How therefore were they to obtain their share of meat? in a similar way to that now used by the black-backed jackals. They are also too small to hunt large prey or compete against a lion, and they do not have wings to spot dead bodies from the air like the vultures. And yet, they are almost always the first on the scene. They have three characteristics also shared by the humans of that time. Good eyesight, legs capable of running long distances, and a certain inventiveness. The secret lies in the vultures, out on the savannah, when a large animal dies of hunger, thirst, exhaustion, or previously inflicted wounds, it is normally first discovered by the vultures. But the vultures cannot eat if another scavenger does not open up the tough body of the animal. While they wait, they form large circles in the sky, circles that are visible from a great distance. Those African Homo erectus, like these bushmen today, were capable of spotting the clouds of vultures in rapidly traveling considerable distances without ever losing sight of the birds of prey, thanks to their erect posture. If they got there in time, they could open up the body thanks to the use of sharp shards of stone and tear off great hunks of meat to take with them before the lions and hyenas arrived. They had to be fast, skillful, and intelligent. They needed good eyesight to spot the vultures, the ability to interpret them, an erect posture so as not to lose sight of them out on the grasslands while using the minimum energy, and primitive tools to cut through the hide. No other animal combined all these characteristics. In this way, early humans were able to increase the amount of meat in their diet and, as a consequence, their brain development. The brain is a demanding organ in terms of energy. It uses up around 20% of the total of the body's total energy consumption. But there was a problem. The majority of the time, this work had to be carried out under a burning sun. Running in the heat raises the body temperature to dangerous limits. Evolution had to invent a special cooling system for human beings. That is why we lost virtually all the hair on our bodies and developed sweat glands. So, like so many other species, we are children of the savannah, the result of the grass revolution. Throughout the planet, even the jungles that remained, other meat-eaters preferred to improve their claws and fangs, among other things. The felines have without a doubt been one of the most successful groups in the arms race of the game of life. But hunting continues to be difficult. 
because the intended prey simply refuses to collaborate. Evolution makes sure that both hunter and hunted constantly change and improve. Every unsuccessful attempt to hunt is an incredible drain on the hunter's energy. If it uses up all its energy, it'll die of hunger, and that is something that happens to many predators every day.